Sad that Chris Christie is no longer running. Not for president, just running. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a choice. We've got a mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Jim Florentine back in the studio. Always good to see you, Jim. See you too, man. So much to talk about with uh, Jim's got a stand-up special. Bite the Bullets available on Amazon Prime. Jim's a great stand-up comedian and all-around personality. I haven't seen you in a little bit, so it's uh, been a minute. It's so good to see you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been a uh, maybe after the pandemic. I'm not sure. It, the, the pandemic is a brain scrambler. I have to go back and look when people died. I have to feel, you know, Bob Saget, two years he's been dead. I'm like, two years? I thought it was like nine months or something. I keep, I, I keep, I can't remember who's gone, who's with us, where I was, which shows that, that for me, and I think everybody, but nobody realizes this, routine is everything. And you think we look at calendars and clocks, but we look at routines. I worked and did two shows Sunday night in San Diego, and my routine got screwed up because I do shows Friday night, Saturday night, and then come home Sunday. But I did shows Sunday night, and so Monday felt like Tuesday to me, except for it wasn't, but it's never about the calendar, it's about the cadence. And and COVID fucked everyone's cadence up. It did, and now that I'm thinking about it, like, didn't Gilbert Gottfried and... Um, Louis Anderson died like within like a week. There was like three of them in a row. Norm McDonald. And Norm McDonald, yeah. like those three within like a, a month. Right. And if you got hold of anybody five years from now and asked when they died, they'd go, they died? <laughs> right. Or, or when? <laughs> or like it, it, it just, it fucked everyone's routine up, scrambled the brain. All right. Uh, Jim knows a lot about music and especially metal because uh, he co hosted uh, that metal show on VH1. For all these years, and uh, we got some crank anchor stuff to get into. But this is uh, serendipitous because I was watching a video of Grand Funk Railroad live from 1974, and a couple things. I didn't, I always knew about Grand Funk Railroad, but I didn't know that their drummer was their singer, which I always respect the shit out (laughs) of because, like, who the fuck can do that and sing? Right. I think the Romantics had a singer. That's right. Uh, I was John drummer, Henley. Yeah. I think was right. So I, I I look at things I could never do and marvel at them. If it's something I think I can do, I'm not impressed. That's the way I go through life. Okay. So some people watch people do stand up and they go, "Oh, I could never do that," and I go, "I'm not impressed." It can't be very good because I could do it. You know what I mean? And <laughs> right. if I see someone riding the unicycle, I go, I'm not impressed. I can ride the unicycle. Right. It's just basic low self-esteem. But drumming and singing is something I don't think I could ever do. No, that's tough. And then I think Phil Collins might have did it with yeah. the solo stuff, too. Mm-hmm. And a little of Genesis. Well, he yeah. started off behind the, the drum kit in Genesis, I think. Oh, you know who did that? Karen Carpenter. Yep. When the Carpenter started, she was the drummer. And at, really? some, at some point, whether it's Phil Collins or Karen Carpenter, you move them front and behind the mic stand, even though you couldn't see Karen behind the mic stand. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. I think on an intelligence Maybe level your- chart, uh, it goes nuclear physicist, drummers who sing, yes. and then oncologist. Yeah. And probably. The, the thing, I agree. And the thing I loved about this video it was it it was 1974. If, if if my kids say to me, "What what did the 70s? What would the mid 70s look like? What was the vibe? What was the sound? What it, what was the aesthetic?" I'd go watch this video. That's that's what 1974 was. His hair's out to here. His shirts off. He's whacking the cowbell. And you just saw Grand Funk. Right? I just saw him. Yeah, open for uh, Kid Rock probably about six months ago. How were they? It was great. Where was this? Uh, in Tennessee, outside of like Nashville. I've Just, never seen Chris Rock live. I mean, Kid, uh, Rock, Kid, Kid Rock. Rock. Yeah, sorry. That's not know, that he's that great. He's up. amazing live. Yeah. I, that's what I hear. I thought he was, I always thought he was sort of a, I don't know, kind of a novelty or something. No, but. no. He plays every instrument. He goes around, does every instrument. He's really talented. Yeah. He's got have a you great seen him, band. Have you seen him uh, just spin records and d- DJ and scratch? Like his, he can scratch really well. I don't know, but I think of him as sort of, now that I, I look at it, I think of him 
as sort of the MAGA Wayne Newton. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Wayne Newton's amazing talent. He plays every instrument. He does everything. And everyone goes, oh, Wayne Newton. And, and he becomes like a punchline. You his know? personality yeah. is bigger than his talent. Yeah, but then you go see him and he's playing all the instruments and doing everything. And you're like, oh, no, there's a lot here. No, yeah, he goes around and does every instrument. It's funny because what I saw, the tour, I saw it twice, once in Tennessee and then one in New Jersey where I live. And Trump, uh, there's a video of Trump after before his encore comes on the screen. In Tennessee, they went ballistic right and he's like you know bob he's not a good golfer he's a good you know making fun or whatever and they go crazy new jersey 50 50 oh yeah 50 50 <laughs> booze and cl- it almost ruined the moment for some people at the show interesting he pops up yeah all right well we have uh, grand funk at the height of their powers in 1974 somebody tweeted me this we won't do that they were talking about coming to your town and banging your ladies and getting drunk and high and then but they work in the word proceeded yeah <laughs> Which yeah. you just wouldn't think would fit in this song. <laughs> they mentioned the biggest groupie of all time, Sweet Connie. Right. Was a friend of mine. She was known to bang all the groupies. You know, so was they she throw the one that documentary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. I never knew Sweet Connie. Yeah, was Sweet, Sweet actual, Connie was oh, a yeah. person. Oh, yeah. She was a groupie with all the bands the Stones, Zeppelin, Grand Funk. Every band in the 70s had her. They just passed her around, and she was cool with it. Jim, the last time we were discussing this song on this show, uh, we were curious about the hotel detective who's out of sight. Does that mean that he just wasn't around and so the groupie snuck by him? Or was he out of sight and they took him into the room and then (laughs) got by him? Do you have anything on that? No, I don't know. I I wasn't there for that. I I took it as he wasn't around. And they were able to do what they wanted to do because the hotel detective wasn't around. But you never know because out of sight is something that people would say a lot. Also, when it comes to sweet, sweet Connie, I don't know. Obviously, she was attractive. But I do. There is no two way street like there's no like, hey, there's this dude I know. And he's 19, and he re- looks good with his shirt off, so he's banging everyone in the Go-Go's, and he's fucking everyone in the Bengals. And right. whenever the uh, the Gladys Knight comes to town, he fucking pounds <laughs> her. Like, there is no version of, I know a dude who looks good with his shirt. It's like he's tight, you know? He looks good, so he gets to fuck whenever the female band, you know, when Roberta Flack comes to town, <laughs> he fucks her. He fucks Aretha Franklin. He pounded Cher the other week. Like, there is... There is no version of Sweet Sweet Connie in the dude yeah. department. There's no, no I don't think Connors. so. Yeah. Sweet Connor, yeah. Now, yeah, there probably isn't, you know. I'm sure there had to be somebody out there, but they probably never talked about it. Like, I was always I was always waiting when the Me Too movement was on that some some guy was going to come out and go, I had to fuck Roseanne to get on her sitcom. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Fuck, you know, I was just waiting. I'm like, there's got to be some dude out there that got pressured you know, I had to fuck this agent to get in this movie. Yeah, Whoopi was, Goldberg said, eat my pussy. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can get you onto The View. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, there is no version. No, no guy, every guy's like, I can't be the first one to do that. Because I'm going to be like, oh, real? Oh, you're going to complain about it? You had to fuck some agent to get the, and get, a, you know, 500000 for a movie? We well, feel really bad for you. the problem with the dude version of Me Too is the boner part like sometimes you'll hear these stories there will be a dude me too but it'll be a gay dude me too and it'll be like this you know this powerful agent like came up behind me and he was banging me in the ass and he was giving me a reach around and anyway after i after i came i feel like i was raped it's like (laughs) all right but if somebody did that to me i wouldn't be hard yeah very true i'd be sweaty and limp you could do it to me but there would be no money shot at the end right, on my yeah. side. <laughs> right. No, I remember there was a, like this college agent when I first started, this female, and she was like, you know, would always hook up the comedians. And the thing was, if you know, if you hook up with her, you'll get some good dates. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So. Well, maybe we're having a he too movement right now. So I, you know, I bought my first car. I did like I. She was a college. I, I all of a sudden she I went colleges. I, yeah. So I had like seven colleges. And what she looked like. Uh, you know, probably a six and a half, seven right. on a scale of one to ten. No so it sweet, sweet Connie. No, it wasn't, good. it wasn't a three. Right, right. I remember one of the comics went into the room like the next day, her office, and she had all the, co- uh, the tour dates, and all the comics were doing a college, and I had like seven up there. He goes, man, you used to fuck their good. I go, yeah, I was I put on a good performance. <laughs> I was How broke at the time. I was still doing comedy like three years. 
All right, but I don't know what year you started, but no, I was 23 probably like, or something? No, I was like 27, probably. Oh, okay. You're looking at the post or anyone with more than six dates. Or yeah, but brothers. I would say about 27, yeah, and I got like seven, a run of seven dates, like 750 bucks a, a piece. Wow. <laughs> I was broke. So there's a version of, you know, pay to play. I, but I loved it. Yeah, I mean, you she were was getting busted, laid. She was pretty hot. Yeah, six and a half, seven. We were six and a half, seven. I was used to fours. Yeah, yeah, no, no yeah. problem. Yeah, let's talk about that. The fours uh, for a know, second. They hold you over. That was uh, always. So my... here's the thing, and I, I we got to get a survey going here, which is, I believe that my wiring is unique, in which that that I will. I always just would hold out for an eight, even if it meant a year of penis sobriety. Really? I would just hold out. Now, my friends were not wired that way. They would they would like an eight, but they but any port in a storm for them, and there's no way they were gonna go a prolonged period of time without getting laid, they would they would drop down a couple of notches and make sure they got laid. I was always like, I'll just wait until until the eight comes around but i was in no position to get an eight because i was driving a pickup truck and i had roommates and i lived in a shitty neighborhood and i'm you know i was swinging a hammer and making eleven dollars an hour so it was a few and far between but i would hold out who is that who has that wiring here i have that wiring you have that wiring yeah. okay dawson wait for the eight you'll go a year yeah, I have. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Byron, if you like ladies, in fact. Yeah, same. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Well, who's the outlier here? Then Jim uh, and Jim. all my friends? I'll take two twos and a four. <laughs> <laughs> that adds up to eight. <laughs> no, well, I would never wait. I'm just like, I'm not going to wait. If it's available right in front of me, then, then let's just do this. I, de- I definitely went to high school with those dudes. I had roommates. I had roommates that I can confirm. Like, we're just bringing the trolls through the front door at 2 in the morning. And I was like, man, what are you doing? It's like, hey, man, what are you doing? Well, so did Getting I. But late. then it became a thing. Like, even a year later, they would get brought up. Like, hey, remember when this happened? Like, you'd ridicule them. Yeah. Oh, you mean you had those roommates? Yeah. Those roommates. Too. I remember I brought this girl back to my uh, friend's house. He lived with his parent, with his dad, and his dad came in the room in the, in the morning, and my friend was in a bed with this one girl I hooked up, and I was on the floor, and he's looking, and it was dark in there. He's like, what's going on here? That's Gary. Okay. He goes, and who's with Orca on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> Guys used to be able to shame. It was a, it was a simpler time. Yeah. I just, uh, you know. I didn't care. I just, uh, for me, when I was younger, because I was a late bloomer, I didn't get laid till I was 18. Mm-hmm. And I maybe had two girls before I was like 21. So I was a late bloomer. So I just had to make up for time. And I hung out with all guys in bands. Oh, you yeah. You know, with the oh, long so. hair and stuff like that. So there's girls constantly around. And, you know, I always have to get the fat friend because I wasn't in the band. What uh, What's your take on Grand Funk Railroad and other bands like that not being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and then people like Kate Bush being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's, I mean, it's a joke. I, it's, it's been a joke for years. Yes. Just that Iron Maiden's not in the band. They right. Sell, you know, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they sell like 40,000 tickets. They sell out arenas, stadiums over in Europe. You know, um, who know, look, it, it's all, if you were a part of Rolling Stone and, you know, that whole thing, if you weren't in there, then you're not going to get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Radiohead, you know, would get in for a solo record, too. Right. They've probably been in three different times. They love Radiohead. <laughs> you know, Black Sabbath was never on the cover of Rolling Stone until, like, 2013. ACDC wasn't until, like, 2004 when they went in. They never respected that kind of rock music, even Grand Funk. Right. Like, Foreigner's not in. Foreigner had so many ba- damn yeah. hits. I was thinking about that... Uh I was thinking about Foreigner in the shower this morning for some weird reason because I I used to, you know, when you're a kid and you're a comedian and there's like a popular song, you're always uh, changing the lyrics to be something stupid. I was literally in the shower today and I was thinking uh, about Double Vision. When he goes, uh, my mind is racing, uh, my body's racing, but my mind is in the lead. I always used to yell my... The other way around. All my right. mind is racing, but my body's in the lead. Right, right. I'd always yell, my balls are racing, but my cock is in the lead. <laughs> I, for some reason, when I was like 14. <laughs> but I was literally thinking, and I was thinking in the shower today, I was like, 
Foreigner's got to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, nope. man. He's nope. the be- they got the best Lou. That's Lou Graham. Yeah. I love Lou Graham. Lou Midnight Solo. Blue. Midnight Blues. Great yeah. song. But uh, two things. Uh, first of all, Sabbath. You talked about them. Sabbath is in. But Ozzy Osbourne, who has outsold Sabbath by millions and millions and millions, is not in. Yeah. And Bad Company who wrote more songs about being in their own band than any other band in existence is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Badco. Badco. Yeah. Wow. And then, of course, Lou Reed is in twice. So that's how you know. It's fucking just that's right. ridiculous. And Springsteen solo records in, and anything he put out, side projects. You yeah. Know, his so solo, all, and then is also the E Street Band. It's like how many times you get Eric Clapton. It's, all, it's all political. Yeah. And I don't know. I see... What I've said over and over again, whether it's the Oscars or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or Rolling Stone, why are you ruining your brand? Why are you ruining it? You 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 don't have to do this. You don't have to be political. You can just let in whoever the best rock and roll bands are into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, not the ones you vetted sort of politically. And when you do it, you hurt your brand. Yeah. I mean, but I look, guess they don't care. No. I mean, Ted Nugent should have been in 20 uh, years ago. Ted Nugent, if you just said we need like like the like the NBA went, well, we need somebody to be on our logo, and they just got Jerry West. You know, they went, Jerry West is the NBA logo guy. That's what Ted Nugent would be for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They said, like, I need one guy. That 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 album cover where he's like squatting down and holding an electric car and it's fire guitar and firing out like a shotgun. State of shock. That is yeah. rock and roll. If you could pick one well, image, like again, if my son said to me, "What is rock and roll?" You can only show me one image. I would show them Ted Nugent in a loincloth, <laughs> yeah. just with a Stratocaster squatting down with fur boots on and hair out to here, just just piling away. But amazing. No. Yeah, I know. And they still won't put him in. You know, obviously, we know why. Right. Because of political views. But look, it's it, it's just like Hollywood. If you if you take the right views, then, okay, we'll give you stuff. If you don't have them, we're, we're going to keep you out. That's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. But uh, was the Kid Rock show you went to, was that political at all? Like, did he say anything crazy or is it all just music? And Yeah, just music, pretty much. Yeah. But then, but he, um, he had some song that he, he put out. And he had in the chorus, "Let's go, Brandon." <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> but meanwhile, he's got he's got he's got uh, you know African American people as man. His, his it guitar is a female gay. drummer, like a black. She's female black. Drummer. He had a drummer and stuff she like rips, that. Yeah. So he's like, "We got to," and they don't care. I'm friends with his uh, guitar player who's gay. She's like, "We don't care." That's just Kid Rock doing his thing. Oh, nice. Yeah, they don't get involved in that stuff. You know what's weird as I as I like think about it when I think about stuff being. Uh, Political, and we got our Whoopi Goldberg uh, clip somewhere, mm-hmm. like which is awesome. But the, the here's the thing about those people, you know, Hollywood Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or whatever, whatever their politics are. You know, their thing is like, look, um, if you don't agree with where we're at politically, then you're out. Like you got to be punished. Okay, so if you're not with us on all things COVID, or you're not with us about the border. Or you're not with us about uh, transing 13-year-old kids, or you're not with us about defunding the police, or you're not with us about uh, you know Joe Biden putting an end to energy independence and stuff. And my thing is, is when have you guys ever been right? And boy, that's a lot of fucking hubris, right? Like I would get it if everything worked. You know, defunding the police worked like a charm. Opening yeah. up the border worked like a charm. COVID masks work like a charm, mandatory vax work. If it all just worked and you defied it, then you'd be kind of an asshole. But it's not like they go like, oh, you're probably going to, you're not going to vote for Joe Biden. I'm like, yeah, Joe Biden doesn't do any. You do understand that your guy isn't effective or doing anything. I mean, Los Angeles in California you know, arguably the tip of the spear for all their movements, you know, all the showbiz people live in California. They live in Los Angeles. It's turning into a homeless shelter that's fucking falling off a cliff. So there's trash everywhere. There's graffiti everywhere and the schools don't work. So what is it about your system that works? And then why am I a pariah for not buying into your system that doesn't work? 
It's crazy. It really is. Um, you know, I remember what Trump was saying, hey, we got to build a wall. He's a racist. And if you thought anyone, they, you know, it could be properly vetted, just go through the right port and, you know, register. And then we could let you in and we'll decide. But instead of sneaking in, he was a racist. And I was like, how could he do that? And now uh, how many people come over the border now? All my liberal friends are like, man, this is ridiculous. Well, they're in our town. We're paying. Why am I paying for their free health insurance? And this? they're in my school. Yes. And they're over here. This is bullshit. Well, you announced you were a sanctuary city. So right. Texas You're took you up on it. I'm in New Jersey, right next to New York. People are freaking out. You know, here's how you know these people don't give a fuck. I was thinking about this uh, last night. J-Lo was all over the entertainment shows because she's dropping an album and J-Lo's doing whatever J-Lo's doing. Uh, and I brought it up on this show a year ago or so. But when J-Lo did her entire Super Bowl halftime show, she shot a doc around it. I think it was Netflix maybe HBO or something like that. And I don't know. She she was the entertainment, the Super Bowl, four years ago or five years ago or whatever it was. And her entire thrust of her Super Bowl show was kids in cages at the border. Like she was just weeping, you know, her AOC and hers. Like kids in cages, kids in cages. Her whole being. She was so like, look, I'm an entertainer and I like vintage race cars, but if I was doing the halftime show at the NFL, I wouldn't surround myself with old Dotsons. <laughs> like I, I would, but I she's know. so passionate. It it. She's so passionate about kids in cages that she makes it the thrust of her Super Bowl show and the theme of her Super Bowl show. Okay, halftime show. Um, I haven't heard a fucking peep out of her or AOC about kids in cages now. There's nothing. Nope. They've completely lost interest in the thing they claim to care most about. So then the question is, is did they ever care about it? And if well, they did, if it's going on more now, then they should be louder than ever. Can and I they think, speak about it during Biden's presidency? No, though? but no. that means they don't care about it. My name is like, I liked vintage race cars during the Trump administration, right. and now Biden's <laughs> in charge, and I still love vintage race cars. So... Yeah, That's no, they were crying because you were separating a kid from the parent. Right, right. I remember telling my kid at that point, he's like, what's going on, Dad? Everyone's talking about it. I go, listen, I go, if, I, if I'm coming back for a party and I'm drunk and you're in the back seat and I get pulled over and I get a DUI, they're going to separate me from you. Right. I'm going into a cage and you're going to be so, you're going to be crying. Don't take Dad. You're going to arrest him. But that's the way it is. Right. Good and conversation. Just like that way. Um, all right. Let's play Whoopi just because it's, it's funny. This is... Uh, her, now, but here's what I want to say to everybody, and and I don't. It's a weird time we're at, in that Whoopi Goldberg is not dumb, and she's you know 65 years old or whatever she is, um, and she's going to say something, and the question is, do you believe she believes what she's saying? Now, I would kill myself if people asked repeatedly, you think Adam believes what he's saying or is he just saying it, you know, which is <laughs> insane. But do you, and Whoopi Goldberg is also capable of being informed. I mean, she has access to all the information we have access yeah. to. Uh, this is, and please make sure the sound is up at the beginning. Uh, this is her on The View two days ago. I'm going to be on day one. I'm going to be a dictator who says it to you, tells you, I'm going to put you people away. I'm going to take all the journalists. I'm going to take all the gay folks. I'm going to move you all around and disappear you. <laughs> if that's the country you want, you know who to vote for. Oh, the if, that's the not, if that's not the country you want, you have to make a decision. He's, so Trump's going to move the gay people around. Where I don't know. Where, where's he going to move them? Well, I, I, I would tell him where the epicenter is. We got West L.A. Okay. Over Miami. here. We got Miami. There's we got uh, spots, sure. yeah, Fire Island. Right. Could, okay. So he's going to focus on the gays, and he's going to move them around. I'm not sure what that does. And then he's going to disappear them, which I guess they're going to the gay gulag. You want to talk about a lot of butt fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you got the gay gulag. We need some lube. I so, don't remember Trump saying he was going to move the gay people around. I mean, Trump. Oh, he would never see it out grew, loud. He, that's he what he's up, thinking. He grew that's up in a, New York City. He's been around gay plan. people and people of color his whole life. It's tough to be racist when you grow up in New York City and you have to build the buildings and deal with a lot of different people. Yeah. So, uh, but, but wait, does remember Whoopi Trump, think 
Wait, Sorry, I'll let remember you finish. When, okay, remember when Trump um, was get, at 2016, if he won the election, any kids that were Spanish or whatever, they were going to be deported. Mm -hmm. So all the kids in school were like, oh, my, my Spanish friend, if Trump wins the election, he's not going to be in my class anymore. He's going to kick <laughs> him out of the country. Right. I swear to God, people were freaking out like uh, in my neighborhood, like, oh, my God, he's going to throw him out. It didn't happen. Yeah, so I don't think he might. I don't think he's going to move around the gays if he gets back in. Well, here's what I always want to tell to all the hysterics, which is even if in his heart he wants to move around the gays. Right. <laughs> let's just say <laughs> if he's not a drinker, but let's say we got him drunk. Right. And I said, what about the gays? And he's go, got to spread him around. <laughs> <laughs> going to spread him around. Then uh, I'm going to disappear him. First off, gay, gays are a very tough group to disappear because they're loud and they're flamboyant. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like trying to disappear a macaw. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a lot of <laughs> flapping and beaks and noise. Yep. You, you could disappear like an old cat or something, <laughs> yeah. but you can't do a macaw or parrot. They'd be terrible you know? magician assistants. <laughs> y yes. You cannot they steal all the focus. <laughs> all the focus. So good luck disappearing a gay. And by the way, who organizes, has the parades, hits the streets, we're here, we're queer. Like you would have a very difficult time disappearing Pete Buttigieg and his right. partner. Yeah. Right. But all right. Let's just say we get Trump drunk and he does explain to us that it is that is something he would fantasize about, which right. would be disappearing gays. <laughs> which, by the way, if you do think too much about disappearing gays, it always means you're gay. You just you just have to you're wrestling with it. You know what I'm saying? But um, he w would not do it because it's not pragmatic and you'd have a very difficult time selling it to your constituency and then the populace at large. So it's like, there's a lot of times when people go, he wants to do this and he wants to do that. Maybe he does, but how would it work? How would it practically work? And then in terms of the people who voted for him, people who voted for him are like, we want energy independence and we want a stout border. I don't remember the disappear the gays plank in the platform, but we don't want you burning calories. That's a big disappearing gays is a huge calorie burner. That's a long term project. That's a long. Yeah. You got to go full time disappearing gays. We want you to give some time to reopening the Keystone Pipeline. <laughs> so the question is: Is does Whoopi Goldberg believe what she's saying? Mm hmm. Nobody knows. Does Gavin Newsom believe what he's saying? Like, do these people believe, does she believe that he's going to put the journalists in gulags and he's going to disappear the gays? Do they believe that? And then what about the three other bitches on the dais? <laughs> that they believe it? Because they just nod their head. No, it, the, the reason that show sucks is because they need one sane person to like raise their hand and go, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, like, like, how is he going to do it? I just want to know. Yeah, practically. Where, where's the quote that he said he was going to do it? Where's the quote? What's the plan? Who's the uh, who's in charge? He had to get Pete Buttigieg into his cabinet and put him in charge of disappearing the right, gays. Yeah, he's like, I know, I know where they hang out. <laughs> I know all the under, uh, underground clubs. I know the websites where they go cruising. Oh, yeah. We can round them all up. <laughs> yeah. All right. So a good way to approach. We, does she believe it? Well, a good way to approach that is stupid or liar. Yes. Stupid uh, or liar. Newsom is a liar. He doesn't mm -hmm. believe it. Mm -hmm. And Whoopi is stupid. She okay. does believe it. I'll buy that. All right, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I think she's confusing, like as you said, what what he may want versus what he can do. Well, that's the whole thing: is when you're dumb and you're an hysteric and you're into chick think, you look at what's in people's hearts, not what they actually do, not the performance or the execution. It's like I know what he wants. Like I've had a million chicks say to me, "You know, he's jealous of what." I was like, "I don't know. He's nice to me." Right. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> you know, he wishes he could switch places. You and I go, "I don't know. He's nice. That's right. all. I only care about the part where the person how they act. I don't really care about." You know in their heart they hate Jews, right? I'm going, I don't know. He opened a synagogue and he makes blintzes. I don't I don't know. I don't know what he thinks. But that's not important to me. I but but it's like saying in his heart he drives 150 miles an hour through a school zone. And I go, yeah, but he's going 22 miles an hour. Yeah, but you know. That's like, I don't care then what's in everyone's heart. I just care about what they do. Yeah, yeah. Is that a more practical way to approach it? Yeah, it sounds uh, sensible. We have. Uh, it sounds like you have logic. I think that, man, that's mm. what they call it. I think uh, we have J-Lo uh, 
with kids and in, in <laughs> this what year is this? It's like five years ago. She did it with Shakira, right? They both did it, the Super Bowl halftime show. Oh, I think this is before Shakira. Or am I screwing this no, up? No, she, she was with Shakira, I believe. Was it, it was like no, the I'm 20 or something? Did she do it twice is the question. So I feel, well, maybe the kids, yeah, I mean, it's like three years old. I don't know when the kids in cages. It had to be, I mean, Trump had to be in office. So that was probably 2019 Super Bowl when okay. he was still in office. Well, we'll just play the, play the clip. We'll figure it out. The cages... The image of the cages for me, like I couldn't believe what I was watching. There's just certain things as a human being you don't do. What is my message? <laughs> yeah, I cut this up because this I was like, like dark subject she talks about kids in cages and then she shakes but her ass. You yeah. can get the message across in a beautiful way where it's soft and it can be received then maybe more people get the message. <laughs> so literally just I'm trying spreading to her ass cheeks. with substance. Not just us out there shaking our fucking asses and fucking belly dancing. I want something real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is her and Shakira. This is about human rights. <laughs> I'm facing you know. the biggest crossroads of my I life. I put this thing together. <laughs> but to take out the cages and sacrifice what I believe in, would be like never being there at all. Mm. All right. So she's worried about the kids in cages, except for she just shakes her fat ass. But well, substance. She's not carried up. She doesn't care anymore about kids in cages, even though we have more kids in cages. So. You saw the people. Remember, they wouldn't let the photographers come down to the border. Right. The Biden administration was blocking them off. There were no cameras around there when they were all stacked in cages and stuff. Right. They didn't want anyone to see they that. They were citing COVID. Yeah. No, you can't come here. No <laughs> cameras, no pictures, no nothing. I do they like that lockdown. And then AOC just went, well, I'll just find some chain link fence that's going around a Walmart or something. And I'll <laughs> kneel and pretend to cry. And then you take a picture of me. And then that'll be me mourning for the yeah. kids in cages. She scrutinized more than praise for that. <laughs> I, I uh, rightfully so yeah. is what I'm saying. So J-Lo's done with kids in cages. Yeah. Back to shaking her ass. Yeah, it was... Uh, I, it'd be great if she would say, I, I want to know. I want to go down the border, make sure it's still not in there. Yeah. Right now. Well, I, don't know what it, go, I, I don't know what her songs are about, so we'll see. We'll see when this album comes out. Maybe maybe there's a song dedicated to it. Mm, I, uh, I hope there's a Kids in Cages song. Do you see those paparazzi pictures with her and Ben Affleck? Every one, she looks miserable, and so does Ben. Like, she's yelling at him. Ben's just like, <laughs> Yeah, Ben's like a meme. Every picture. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine how high maintenance that is. Ben just wants to watch the game. He likes to drink and gamble. He's exasperated in every picture. He likes to smoke. Smoke yeah. cigarettes. Hey, you can't. She's in fucking standing there with her Pilates instructor, and you're walking by with a cigarette and a beer. You know, how's that going to work? Do you think she wants to watch a Red Sox, you know, a White Sox game in April? No. Seven games in a season. Hey, you know, the third game in a season on a Tuesday night. No, the other I, I this may be the Tom Brady syndrome, which is like, you know, I'm going to get up at 545 in the morning, stretch, and then I'm making an avocado smoothie. And you're like, I'm going to wake up at noon. I'll be hungover. And I went hash browns. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like how, how long is that going to work? You're going to feel judged at a right. certain point. But yeah. they can't even go outside without having their picture taken. So this must be really bad. Where if Even in their pictures, they go outside and they still can't help it but argue and bicker and look miserable. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, Halftime, came out June 2022. I guess that's the doc, but I don't know. It was three you. years ago. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So she cared about kids in cages, and now she doesn't. Yeah, it's it's off that radar now. <laughs> okay. Great halftime show, though. <laughs> yeah. It was a nice little moment. Everyone jumped on that bandwagon, but now it's fine. Yeah. All right. We should take a break. We got some news. Jim's got to get out. We got about 45, 50 with the him or so. Maybe 35, 40. I'll do the math. Either way, Jim Florentine's going to hang out. We're going to do some news, and we'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about Simply Safe 2023. Well, that's wrapped. It's time to reflect. This year, resolve to keep your loved ones safer than ever with the best home security system of 2023. 
That's according to U.S. News and World Report. That is simply safe. These guys have been sponsors for a long time. We love their product. We all use it here. I've told you, very nicely ergonomically designed. You peel and stick. Get your system up and running in like half an hour. Do it yourself. Don't have some tech making a mess in your house. They have comprehensive uh, systems that detect break-ins, fires, floods, and other threats. 24-7 professional monitoring under a buck a day, half the cost of traditional home security. Satisfaction, guaranteed. They got a 60-day free trial. If you don't love it, return the system for a full refund. And my listeners get 20% off a new system with Fast Protect monitoring. So go to simplysafe.com slash Adam. Save that 20%. It's simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Hello? Yes. Uh, Mr. Florentine? Yes. I'm calling with Financial. I'd like to get a receive a free proposal for their home equity line of credit. Who are you? Wait, who are you? Hello? My no, 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 no. Uh, uh, sir, this is my house. What are you doing? Where's my the money? Sir, this is my house. What, how did you get in here? Watch your hands, buddy. Hello? What was that? S- some guys in my house. Wait, do you think you should get them out? <sighs> yeah, I should, but I don't know. I don't Watch know. your hands, buddy. Sir. Hello? Yes. Miss, okay, keep going. I'm sorry. This free proposal is designed exclusively for homeowners. Even S- comes with a... Sir, what are you doing? I, I told you... Just, 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 Where's your mind? Ow, 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 right in the knee. Oh. Are you all right? I... Yeah, uh, keep going. I just... Oh. What was that? He shot me right in the knee. He shot you in the knee? He shot me in the knee, yeah. yeah. Uh, what were you saying about the equity? I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding, but just... Uh, Keep going? Yeah, I mean, I... Uh, this free proposal is designed exclusively for homeowners. even comes with potential taxes. Uh, because it is a home equity line. Look, sir, sir, I'm trying to get this equity loan. What's the interest rate? Wait, miss, 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 what's the interest rate? The guy wants to know. He's... Well, you know what? I don't think it's any of his concern. <laughs> She said it's not. What, what, what is the interest rate? Please tell him. I do. The guy's got a gun. Can you please? Can you just tell him what it is? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Hello. Are you there? Jim Florentine is on the Adam Carolla Show. Bite the bullet. Name of the special on Amazon Prime. The podcast. Everybody is awful except you. Is available wherever you find finer podcasts. Website. I guess we'll have dates on the website, right? Yeah. JimFlorentine.com. And that bumper was from uh, Jim and Don Jameson to uh, terrorizing telemarketers together. Yeah. And uh, they don't have to crank call the telemarketers. The telemarketers call them. Yeah, that's and it's the gold. beauty. That's gold. Far long time before crank anchors came around. Yeah, I think that was in like 2000 I did that call. <laughs> Um, I, I just did another one. There's seven volumes out. Oh, really? Yeah. It's so great. I just keep doing I'm like, yeah, why not? Why just keep doing it? <laughs> it's still funny to me. I still have my home phone lined up, you know, hooked up. I got the recorder hooked up. I pick up all the time. Let's see what I got here. <laughs> it's constantly ringing over and over again. It's great. Yeah, Jim doing the belch call on Crank Anchors with the guy who thought someone was on the other line. I mean, that, that was just the greatest. I was there. You were there. I, I was there going, oh, my God, we've, we've captured lightning in a bottle. Because you know, crank calls, you have the way you hope they go. And then sometimes there's the way they go, and it's not the way you'd hope they go. And then sometimes there's a sweet magical moment where there's a third way it's going, which is much better than the way you hoped it would go that you can't believe we're on. And that's what happened with that call. And then the way they uh, put it together where the guy's looking around because he's like searching around the office, looking like, I go, look, it's not me burping. It must be someone at your office. And he's just moving around looking at cubicles was genius. Suck it. it was so good. I just remember sitting on the floor in that recording studio <laughs> off the strip. All right. Should we do some news? Yeah. So there's this uh, new comedy special that was released. It's an hour long. It's called George Carlin. I'm glad I'm dead. It is an AI generated comedy mm-hmm. special. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, when this was released, Kelly Car- Carlin, George's daughter, says, my dad spent a lifetime perfecting his craft from his very human life brain and imagination no machine will ever replace his genius 
Let's, and then uh, with AI, and then in, in uh, her response to AI, she says, "Let's let the artist's work speak for itself. Humans are so afraid of the void that we can't let what has fallen into it stay there." And she says, "Like my dad has 14 specials that already exist. Why are we doing this?" So she's not supporting. A lot of uh, George's fans are rallying behind her, but AI generated specials now. So it sounds like she's not got the cut. Yeah. <laughs> that's why she doesn't yeah. support it. If A, I was getting a cut, yeah. that's what they should call it. And B, I'd get some back end, then A, I would be into this. <laughs> yeah, A, I ain't getting a cut. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I don't know. I, 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 I kind of envy people who have strong feelings about legacies and stuff like that because I don't give a shit about any of that I stuff. Don't either. Uh, look. It could be interesting, and it might fall under the heading of something we talked about, which is like ABBA is doing a virtual tour, tour now. You know, it, it's you know Michael Jackson. You know, like maybe there's some, maybe there's something interesting about it. I mean, I'll give you a, I'll give you an example because uh, uh, I like cars, and they make replicas of. Fifty million dollar cars. They they do pretty they do pretty nice replicas, and then they do other versions. Like they do like Porsche nine eleven, but Singer does their own take on a Porsche nine eleven, which is magnificent. And then there are guys who do like well, it's a twenty million dollar car or ten million dollar car, or whatever. We do a really good version of it, and it's three hundred grand. You know, which sounds expensive, but not twenty five million bucks. It's not the same thing, but it is a version of it, and it's kind of interesting. And you could get into it, and you could drive it around, and you could own it. So I don't know if there's if if that's where this is going. I mean, that's the happy version of where this is going. It's like those uh, you know fake designer bags you buy in Chinatown, New York City. Right. You know, you could buy the Louis Vuitton real one for four grand. You could buy one for thirty bucks, and it right. looks exactly the same. Yes. And some people don't care. Right. All right. So I guess I would just watch it and see what it what it sounded like i think i think ai artificial intelligence is going to do very well but ultimately it will fail all of us because yeah. the intelligence it's right in the name it's it's artificial it's not real well and also they go yeah but here's the thing they go like i get ai doing reams of computing and work and shit mid-level guys that an attorney, uh, you know, a, or an agency do, do, you know, the guys in the cubicles with all the paperwork and all the grunt work. They go, well, it, it could replace that. And you go, okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, but then they go, it'll never replace, you know, George Carlin. But if they built a computer 30 years ago that could beat a chess champion in chess... And that's an intellectual process, you know what I mean? And that shit's 30 years old. So I think if you could if you could beat a chess master with a computer, you could probably accurately simulate George Carlin. You know what would actually be a good use of AI? What's that? I know, I should have just piled forward <laughs> with my explanation. Well, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it last night when I was done thinking about foreigner lyrics, I was thinking, you know, um, it's Oscar. It's getting time. It's Oscar time. Uh, or it's getting into Oscar time. All the award shows, you know what I mean? And Kimmel's hosting, and I'm going to ride on it. And so I'm starting to kind of pay attention who's winning the Golden Globes, who's winning the Director's Awards and all this shit, you know. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to start get a start on, like, who's going to get nominated and what are the jokes. So I'm, like, sitting around, and I'm, like, I got my notepad out, and I'm just writing Barbie over and over again and then trying to think of a joke and stuff. And then I thought to myself, I'm not, I'm not that good at a, fresh sheet of paper. What you need to do is you tell me your sort of half-baked Barbie joke and let me see if I can tweak it and get it somewhere better, you know? So you're better as a punch-up guy. I th I can write jokes, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm better when I start reading other people's jokes and subjects and stuff like that, and I go, oh, yeah, okay. And I realize AI could do that. You could say to AI... 
uh, write a bunch of Barbie jokes for the Oscars or something, and it could give you some stuff, and then you could go, well, we're not going to use this, but it's reminding me of some stuff yeah. to do. You know what I mean? That could work well. Yeah, really well. I mean, could you do that at this point? Say, give yeah, me some I think Barbie that's, jokes. That's essentially what AI does at this point. It won't yeah. deliver the, you the polished jokes, but it, it might come up with a few ideas. Yeah. 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 You know, it might come up with a couple of Ken's gay jokes or something right. that you could massage right. artfully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, for the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> for the Oscars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought if AI spit out 20 premises, for Barbie, I I would it we would get the juices flowing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, now it looks like Chris is trying to do that. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna see if I can do it. So we'll we'll see if it uh, if if AI if it, AI right now is like is like Don Swayze. Yeah, you know Patrick mm-hmm. Swayze was is just an Adonis, a beautiful man, great chiseled facial features. Don Swayze was like you told AI like. Um. Uh, okay. If if Swayze's parents had an affair with threesome with Patrick Swayze, they would end up having Don Swayze because all of his features are really. He's like, hey, it's just like if 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 Patrick Swayze would was evil in in a movie, he would look like Don Swayze. Don right. Swayze looks like he's the only brother. He looks more like Patrick Swayze than Patrick Swayze. He is so much more Patrick Swayze. Really? I've never even seen a picture of him. Oh, man. You are going to be blown away when you do. All right. Do you have uh, any answer? In 0.01 seconds, it gave me a monologue. Really? You want me to do it? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. (laughs) Wow. He looks more like Swayze than Swayze. He does. But he looks like evil Swayze. (laughs) It's AI. That is, that's AI. All right. Um, here, you know, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard about Barbie's latest career move? Yeah, apparently she's taken up stand-up comedy. I mean, why not? She's been through every other profession on the planet. Mm. Anyway, I caught her act the other night, and let me tell you, she's got jokes as plastic as her smile. She, she started with, why did Ken Joe cross... Joe should have used a little... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> she started with, why did Ken cross the road? I thought... This is it. We're in for a classic punchline. But no, she said, to get to the plastic surgeon. Ouch. Even I wince at that one. I guess Ken's not the only one with a plastic reputation. Right. But you might say, you know, plastic Barbie, plastic surgeon. Maybe there's something, like if there's some actress that was in it that had too much plastic surgery or something. Like there's some kernels of... There's Stuff a bit, here. It, could get, it, yeah. up. it also sounds like something any number of comedians would do on a. Yes. You know, it's. The, right. Okay. Well, so they're working on another live action Barbie movie because apparently the world was desperately craving a film about a woman who's had more careers than I've had failed diets. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying there's a there's a base that's yeah. been yep. being laid, laid down. And when I was just writing Barbie, I wrote Barbie sequel. <laughs> uh, so we're yeah. on the same page. Yeah, I mean, forget Barbie Princess Adventure. I'm waiting for Barbie Midlife Crisis Edition. Okay, and like I said, from there. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's keep rolling. And what's the you next? You should submit uh, those jokes story. to Jimmy. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see the feedback he gives you on them. So, dude, I think I got a good hunk on Barbie. Just <laughs> let, give me some notes on it. <laughs> let's see what he says. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um. So, Britney Spears. Hmm. Uh, speaking of music, she has went on Instagram and told everyone she vows that she will never return to the music industry. She says, just so we're clear, most of the news is trash. They keep saying I'm turning to random people to do a new album. Well, I'm not. Never coming back. Uh, okay, so my supposition is Britney Spears and to a greater extent like Paul Abdul – aren't interested in music and, and never really were. You know what I mean? Like when you, you know, we interviewed Peter Frampton on the show last week. He's interested in music, you know, the, yeah. the, the, and I always say, you know, stand up comedians, you know, you know, Louis CK or Chris Rock or whoever, like, you know, these guys can fill arenas, but you'll find them on a Thursday night down at the cellar at midnight working material out in front of 65 people. Right. So it's like they're interested in stand up. I don't I don't think Paula Abdul or Britney Spears are really into music. I, I because 
They don't do it enough. They don't really talk about it that much. They kind of retire all the time. Like, you know, Britney Spears is 42 and Peter Frampton's 73, and he's on tour right now yep. because he wants to right. play music. That That's what – I don't think people – I don't think people understand that. I don't think Britney Spears is a musician. Right. When Peter Frampton isn't performing, he's probably playing guitar somewhere. He's writing. Writing, writing songs. doing something. It's like, yeah, because like Paul Abdul probably hasn't put an album out, who knows, 10, 15 years. As a comic, if I didn't do anything for 10 or 15 years, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine doing that. I can't take more than three weeks off. I got to be back <laughs> in the clubs. I got to be working all the time. Right. Yeah, I'm just going to sit around, and then maybe I'll do something in 10 or 15 years if I feel like it. But it would mean that you weren't really that into comedy. I've absolutely. That's what that would mean. So I don't think Britney Spears is into music. Yeah. I don't I, know I that she ever that. was. I, I, yeah. I just, I, and I don't, I, I don't think Paul Abdul, I think there's a group of people. I mean, Janet Jackson may not be into music. I, I just a group of people that I just don't believe are really into it. So it yeah. makes perfect sense to me that they don't do it because they don't want to do it. They don't need it. They're not compelled to do it. Yeah. And the longer she waits, just the more pressure is going to build up anyway. I mean, the last album came out in 2016 mm -hmm. and, and no music since then. And I, we've been perfectly fine. So society moves on. Yeah. Um, Do you hear Selena Gomez is going to play Linda Ronstadt in a new biopic? That's She's what I heard. a lot of weight on. That's what I heard. Well, young Linda. Oh, young Linda. Okay. Young Linda was considered the babiest of all 70s babes. She was she was foxy. Her she had these great outfits. She'd get in these short shorts and put roller skates on and and that'd be the cover of her album. She dated uh, Jerry Brown, the governor of California. They were like a hot it couple. And then she was considered the foxiest chick in, in rock and roll. And then later on, she started getting in touch with her Spanish roots and putting out ranchero music. And I think she got in touch with some quesadillas and stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> but she was young Linda. In her prime. Yeah, in in, in her prime. Uh yeah, well, go get the album cover. By the way, her biggest album was her like in in roller skates, looking 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 all seventy skinny and trucking down the road and everything. Oh yeah, she was she was considered a stone fox. So she's gonna who's playing her? What's Selena her? Gomez. Selena Gomez. If you're gonna play twenty three year old Linda Ronset, you'd have to drop a few pounds to get to twenty three year old. Then later on. You, you know, you go De Niro, Raging Bull. You yeah. know, you bulk it up. Here's a question. I have a very serious question. Guys do the move all the time where they get all ripped in great shape and then they get fat. You know, they put on 30 pounds for this role. Do women ever do it? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, think, I think they have too much ego to do it. Guys do it. There's plenty of roles where guys got fat to the do the role. The chick who played Barbie did it. Uh, and Linda I, Tanya. No, not I, Tanya. Rachel McAdams did it in Mean Girls. Uh, she did. Oh, uh, okay. Hold on. Uh, she did it. Margot Robbie did it in I, Tanya. Yeah. All right. Let's find a picture from I, Tanya where she's ice skating, and we'll see if that's correct. Okay. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> but she's not. All right. She we'll, certainly check, wasn't, we'll check your math. She certainly wasn't like uh, a. a, a Attractive. Totally. I said, put on weight, Dawson. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, even she, uh, but she did put on some seven like, pounds, okay, okay. four pounds. Forget what what are we talking? She's Not playing a, a professional. Load. Just find a picture of her ice skating, and then we'll see if Dawson's supposition is correct. Because yeah. like Renee Zellweger didn't do it in those movies where she was fat. She used a fat suit in those. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, we need full. We need yeah, full. Yeah, no, full length. You're right. Forget it. All right. Forget it. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Fun. Yeah. You don't see it. You don't see it as often. Or ever, really. <laughs> Selena Gomez can fluctuate weight-wise. And if she wants the Oscar, she goes young Linda Ronstadt. And young Linda Ronstadt is uh, size two. You know, I mean, like, you know, 115 pounds or 20 pounds. Or something. She goes way down. And then she goes De Niro and bulks it up for the end of the career. 
I don't think she'll do it, but if she wants it, that's the way to do it. Yeah, you're right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, um, it said. What about we, Charlize Theron in uh, Monster? She, oh, yeah, she, 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 she ugly. She, she, I think ugly. she uglied herself up, and she probably did pack on a, a couple. I mean, yeah, she gained like 50 15. pounds in three months. 50. 50. That's what the internet that's says. That's a perfect. That seems unthinkable, but Jeez. that is a good point, and I was thinking of her when I was talking about it. That is an example of a woman diving into a role and packing on the pounds. But is there a role? She was just big the whole movie. Is there the raging bull scenario? Mm. If Selena Gomez wants that Oscar, that's what she'll do. Shoot the fat scenes first. Yeah. You know, shoot out a sequence, right? And then go full keto and get it down to young Linda. Mm hmm. Did, did she won the Academy Award that year, Charlize Theron, right? For that, for that role. Bet she did. That she want put the fifty pounds on. Yes. Yeah, so. You don't put fifty pounds on and not go home with something. Yeah. You gotta go home <clears throat> with Academy Award at fifty pounds. Yeah. Still doesn't look like fifty pounds. When you're her face is still skinny, but when when you're a hundred when you're hundred and twenty five pounds, one seventy five is fucking big. Well, she definitely packed it on. Let's hope she won the award. <laughs> All right. What else? Um, so Bill Belichick. He's officially out as coach. Hold on. Don't you feel like we talk about Selena Gomez a little too much? I'm I'm not exactly sure what she biggest, does. Well, she's uh she's a, obviously the pop singer. Um, only murders in the building is her big her big. I show. get it. And she, she was like a star. With Taylor Swift. She yeah, hangs so. out with Taylor Swift. But is it is, Selena Gomez's name? Like you know what? She's taking a break from social media. Like have <laughs> That's I got right. she have is. a sixty five year old uh, Armenian Uber driver who would go? Did you hear about Selena Gomez? <laughs> She's taking a break. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck do we care so much? I, I, I'm gonna my Mount Rushmore is Jennifer Aniston, Selena Gomez, and um, oh god, what's her name from Modern Family? Sophia. Sophia Vergaro. Like, I do not need to know everything these bitches are thinking every fucking step of the way. I just don't need to know. I, I don't dislike either one of them, and I think they're all talented. I just don't need to know what they're thinking. Every time I turn on Billy Bush on X-ray, just pops up, and, and he's like, Sof Sophia Vergaro. And I'm like, I, every show. Or it's Selena Gomez, or it's Jennifer Aniston. I just, is it because they have the best publicist? J-Lo's in there, too. Like, I just don't need to know what they're thinking all day, every day. But are these are these outlets covering it because they want, they're pushing her out or because the there's an audience for it? Like, I mean, they're obviously they, they, they probably don't even want to cover Selena Gomez, but it gets the most clicks. It gets the most views. People love her. I get. Well, I, I don't think it's that they love her. I think it's that that she divides a nation. You know, they hate her, and then she gets into she gets into beefs with people, yeah. and then they have. Then she goes after Kylie Jenner. You know, and then there's an issue. And I think they like the drama. Yeah, they like the drama part of Selena yeah. Gomez, and, and now Taylor Swift's getting involved. She right. never got backlash, I love that. and she, now she's getting backlash, and she doesn't know how to handle it, which is great. Selena Gomez gets a kidney from her best friend, and now they have a beef. You know, and then, then they come on, they go, "Someone gave me a kidney." I would forever be grateful <laughs> yeah. to that person. That's what they like about it. Yeah, that's what they like about it—the beef part. Right. Yeah, well, chicks like beef. They 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 say they don't, but they like it. Love it. They love it. We'll see how she does playing Linda. I mean, this could that. she could be she could sing and she looks like her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Bill Belichick out as coach for the New England Patriots. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. So reminder, he holds the record for most Super Bowl victories and appearances by a head coach, as well as the most conference and division titles. All came during his 24-year tenure with the team, the fifth longest coaching tenure in NFL history. He he's getting. His legacy got uh, Joe Pod, Joe Paterno. <laughs> yeah, he, he got Joe Paterno. This this this, this <laughs> genius, this man that everyone looked up to, this strategist that could do no wrong. And then Brady leaves, goes and wins the Super Bowl. He goes four and twelve, and. He completely Joe pod himself for the last be a better four years. Analogy no, it's no, no better analogy than a coach 
who has fallen from grace. Okay. Yeah, because you know we always thought is it Brady or is it Belichick? When they split, we go all right. Well, let's see who who it really was. And Brady wins a Super Bowl. That's right. In his first year, and goes back to like the championship game in his second year, and Belichick. You know, the team just falters. Goes, I think they went like nine and seven the first year, but then they've been eight, nine, four and twelve, and now he's out. Yeah, so it was him. Yeah, yeah. it's not like Joe Pa ever put his hands on anyone. Chris. Ah, he was just, oh. he was just there. Right, right. Mm-hmm. We'll have to have Byron look into that. Um, so he's yeah. going to join another team. He's like sixteen wins away from breaking Don Shula's all time record for wins. Oh, and really? That's what he wants. Yeah, yeah. He's totally hireable. Some. Yeah, else, and but... I'm a Miami fan, so I would want him to retire, but I know he's not going to. So he's going to break it. He'll yeah. go to the Chargers. That's a perfect spot for mm. him. I they agree. Already got a quarterback. They got receivers. They got a good, decent defense. They needed a coach there. He'll be living in L.A. Mm-hmm. He'll love it. Yeah, that's that's if if they pay him. The the problem with the charges they've been notoriously cheap. And Belichick ain't working for six million dollars a year. He's going to want like twenty. Really, twenty mil, probably fifteen to twenty mil. Yeah, really. Yeah, some the Redskins will pay him. Washington well, will pay I'm him. I'm going to do my mom. I'm doing my mom from the grave. Tell me how much Bill Belichick needs to coach an NFL team. Fifteen to twenty million. And a school teacher <laughs> in, in Riverside County gets forty four thousand dollars a year. A school teacher, and all this guy does is tell these big loaf, these big oafs, no, go run that way, go run this way. That's all he does. So he just does. He he talks to millionaires. Prima donnas, and just tell them, oh, you guys all get in line, and we're just going to hand the ball to this guy, and then you run that way. But these school teachers who shape youth are getting $44,000 a year, and Bill Belichick's getting 50. Do you think that's right? Um, well, maybe we're. Do you the, think it's right? Don't take the summer off, and you, maybe you'll make more money. My friend Bert is a school teacher in Riverside. <laughs> that that that's my mom from the grave. Right, right. Okay. I always love when they take the game. You know, these yeah. giants. They hand them the ball in basketball, and they just stand under the hoop, and they just drop it into a hole, and he gets millions of dollars. But a school teacher, they're not even running the whole time. They just stand there, and they they throw the ball to the tall guy, and he just drops it into the hole. And he gets forty million dollars a year and a school teacher. <sighs> no balance. My friend Agnes oh. is a is a works special needs in Riverside County at school. She gets forty one thousand dollars a year and Bill Belichick. <laughs> For barely working a couple months out of the year, just telling big rich guys, run that way. Just go, just go run with the ball and to just go put it over there. And he gets $16 million a year. You think that's fair? Yes. <laughs> this dinner's over. Yeah. Your mom ruined football. Good, I want to get out of this conversation with her. <laughs> just, just, yes, I agree. Oh, I yeah, the first thing like... they have to do is completely simplify what these people do <laughs> right. into something. Your friend Berta should start coaching professional football then and really get in on this cash train, Mom. Your doofus friend. All right. But, bro. yeah. Um, so speaking of Massachusetts, so there's a Massachusetts woman who is suspected of trying to poison her husband with tainted soup after a person posing as a soap opera star online told her, get rid of him. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she was basically being catfished. She, she, uh, she sent this guy or this woman money, the person catfishing her, and then eventually got into a plot where the guy was like, hey um, – we should we should get rid of your husband and she she messaged him back like all right I'm poisoning his soup yeah that 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 relationship is not built on a bedrock of trust you know what I mean if you can just if you're one text away from murder that's pre- there's probably not a lot of good history there and you didn't even meet the person yet I could see if right. you're having a tour de fair you right. know and you're like hey, I'm gonna leave him this is ex- I've got finally got some excitement in my life. So they call nine one one. He gets the the guy goes to the hospital. Um, he's okay, but the daughter became suspicious. Went into the text messages, saw what was going on. Who it. who is more gullible in that department? Like in the catfish department, meaning you see a picture of the woman, 
Um, she looks the part in her 60s. Dental hygiene's not great. Got a, got a gut on her and some gray hair. But she thinks that the soap opera star is interested. Do you know what I mean? Which, which you and I would go, oh, come on, sweetheart. He's dating a 25-year-old model. Right. You know what I mean? He's not interested in you. But, but she believes in love and, and herself. You know what I mean? She's not seeing what we're seeing in the mirror when she looks in the mirror, right? But dudes are pretty gullible, too. They get catfished all the time, too. Who is more gullible? Because, again, if you see this woman and and you see the soap star, you'll go, baby, did you really think this is what he was interested in? But she did. I think, I think it's older people. Older people are more gullible. Yeah. How like, old is the woman? 64. She is 64. Yeah. So, like, I, I personally know old people who have been scammed on, you know, hey, like, my my grandmother was called saying, hey, we have, my brother's name's Marvin, we have Marvin in another country here, we need, he can't get out, we need you to send us, like, a thousand dollars, and she did it. First off, that would never work on my grandma. She'd be like, keep him. Keep him. <laughs> she would believe him. <laughs> How much She'd again? be all right with it. Yeah, <laughs> that douchebag. Good luck. He never stops yeah. talking. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> no one's getting any sleep over there. He's going to be complaining the whole fucking time. Keep him. Oh, by the way, thousand dollars. She saved. She sent a thousand. I, I mean, I, I could get got the number wrong. Right. But she. Yeah. She sent money. That's to these, to that's these scammers. that's gullible, but it's still not. Her thinking that a soap star wanted a banger, mm. you know what I mean? That's that's what <laughs> I'm you saying. Never met. Sorry, you had to picture that or anything. But, yeah. Now, how was? Did I know who the soap star was? Yeah. They, um, let me let me get the because it was name. like a good looking young guy. And it's no, like, he was. I mean, he's, he's good. From he's good looking. It's got the word beautiful in the title, so he, you know you can't be a three. Right. Thorsten yeah. K. Is he was. He was a little bit age appropriate. Okay. Like a little bit younger, probably, but looked. But handsome. Okay. You know what I mean? I think a lot of these telemarketers that call, like, they're scam they're scammers, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean you you deal with them a lot. Like it's just like I had I've been getting calls from the same number all the time about like some energy commission because uh, for my home. And I and I told them like, Can you please take me off the list? Can you please stop calling me? And the guy's like, Why do you have a phone if you don't want calls? <laughs> That's, what That's he, a good point. <laughs> Why do you have a door if you don't want a gangbagger to kick yeah. it in? I said a complete opposite. I give my number out to everyone. <laughs> well, yeah, you use it. You, yeah, I love it. It's content for you. All right, let's do another. Um, so Steve Martin, speaking mm. of only murders in the building. Everyone loves Steve Martin. Yeah. Um, mm. Well, he has gone out and uh, and supported Joe Coy for his Golden Globes. Oh, that's nice. gig. So he, he went on threads, which is a... Uh, Meta's version of Twitter or X, and he says, I tip my hat to anyone who steps out on stage to host a live awards show. It's a very difficult job and not for the squeamish. I know because I'm still throwing up from the last time I did it in 2010. So congratulations to Joe Coy, who took on the toughest gig in show business, hit, missed, was light on his feet, and now is 20 minutes of new material for a stand-up. That's, that's a good take on it. Yeah. It's a little... It's good. It's, it's got a tinge of like, listen, Jim Florentine got the shit kicked out of him in the octagon, but I tipped the cap that he went into it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would have never fucking, <laughs> I would have never gone in with Randy Couture because Jim does, has no formal training and he got his ass kicked in four seconds, but I wouldn't have done it. Like, that's pretty good. You have to admire his, his stones. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that part of it's not, that complimentary, that part, like, like if someone said, if you got off stage and <laughs> doing a stand up set and people are like, yeah, not, you know, it wasn't that funny, but took a lot of balls to get up yeah, there. Yeah, just so you went up in front of that crowd is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's good. And the part where he said it was hit, some hits and some misses. Right. That's true. He was light on his feet. That is true. And the truest part is he's got 20 minutes of new stand up material which is ultimately true yeah so, and it's uh, worth it's worth it for him yeah look you do four minutes of jokes it's like you can't come up with four minutes of uh, someone gonna bomb but who cares you know and then you can't just blame it on the writers yeah that one the ones that work are mine the ones that the writers wrote the, the, i didn't write that one yeah I that think was a comic up there floundering you know when that he's not used to bombing 
I know. think I think the problem. I mean, we've all experienced this, Jim Florentine, where you go, "Here's how this is working in my head," and then here's how it's actually working. And sometimes you get out there and what's happening is much different than what happened in your head like the day before when you were thinking about it. And that's the tough realization. Sometimes it goes the right direction. Sometimes you go, fucking hey, this is rock and roll. Like I didn't expect this big a reaction, but we're rolling now. But sometimes it goes the other direction. And that industry crowd is not, not what you want for that. You have to, I, I would almost say for that crowd, you need to almost put training wheels on your act and just go, I'm going to make it as basic, as simple as uh, there's, there's, it's almost like I, I'm not swinging for the fences. I'm making contact. I have to make basic. contact with, I'm going to fucking choke up a little on this bat and punch some doubles yeah. into left field. I'm not going for the fence. So it's almost like you crap. want AI to write the jokes. I want AI, <laughs> AI to write the jokes. <laughs> well, you know, uh, homework for you. Get AI Joe Coy uh, hosting the Golden Globes next year and then get the actual transcript of it and uh, we'll see. <laughs> How um, that goes. So there's this magazine called Ms. Magazine. Ms. Yeah, it's a feminist magazine. Mm-hmm. And they wrote about Joe Coy's performance, obviously Mm-mm. scathing review. Mm. Um, and then they went through some of his jokes. And then they put, it as a as a side note, you caught a stray is what the kids would say in this one. It says, Coy appears. I caught a stray. Yeah, Adam did. Oh. Um, Coy appears as a weekly guest host on the Adam Carolla Show podcast. Hold on. I. First off, every single article I read about me or my car collection or whatever is everything is wrong every time. He's a weekly guest <laughs> guest, guest host, host so yeah. I'm somewhere else. Yeah, he's filling in for you. All so right. he's not a weekly guest host. He he's no. shows up as much as you show up. Right. Okay, yeah. But, but you would you would <laughs> be, be as easy. accurate saying that Jim Florentine is a weekly guest host of the Adam Carolla show. Okay. Over yeah. over the last few years, he used to come in on a regular basis, but it was never weekly. Right. All right. Um, so yeah, weekly guest host on the Adam Carolla Show podcast. Carolla has said of his politics, "quote I want a secure border. I'm not into the welfare state. I'm not into all those freebie lunch programs and of women comedians. Chicks are always the least funny on the writing staff, and dudes are funnier than chicks." So. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was asked who's funnier. Fifteen years ago, I yeah, did an interview. And they they went, still bring that who's up. Who's funnier, men or women? I go, man. I, what am I going to say? It's a tie? Yeah, you're right. Here are my choices. It's exactly the same, statistically. <laughs> or women are funnier, or men are funnier. I said men are funnier, but they're trying to get laid. It's it's in their culture to get laid. To be funny, you can get laid. Women, funny, ugly, funny women don't get laid any more than... Uh, uh, you, a guy wouldn't take a funny three over a completely humorless six. Nope. Nope. But a woman will take a three of a dude who has a great sense of humor uh, over over seven on a dude. That's why we're funny. But anyway, I said, men. But I also don't like when people don't answer the question. Plus, I know many more dudes who are in comedy than women who are in comedy. Yeah, I mean, the the ratio is, you know. And I'm loosely basing it on my mom. (laughs) <laughs> Do you think Bill Belichick deserves so the article is half right? Yeah, and a school teacher. Yeah, I'm basing it on them, but I'm like, he's a weekly guest host. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. should. You should also be interested in some of the other headlines on stories that they have at Ms. Magazine. Punish, torture, kill. The reality of pregnancy in pro-life America. I hate that game. <laughs> we do. Mm-hmm. Close. All the, time. the Oscar-nominated movie that names the threat in our sons' lives, and finally, my favorite, the rape of the girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we know where they're coming. Yeah. Jim, there's. A, I think there's. Jim's got to catch a flight. I just want to play something. Do you have Megan Kelly? Because somebody tweeted me this, which is, I would fuck up whenever Joe Coy was in here. I'd call him Joy. Yeah, whenever when he's guest hosting, because it's every week when he comes in Monday bright and early, because <laughs> the name is J O. Yeah, and then I guess it's K O Y, and I see the Y at the end. I just go Joy, and I fuck up, and it's a running joke, and he hates it. <laughs> 
Sure. Other people don't do it, but I would always fuck up and say Joy instead of Joe Coy. Well, now someone else has joined my my ranks. There was a guy named Joy Coy. Joy <laughs> Coy. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. She's so, probably a listener on a podcast. She does love me, and I would argue that we have the same brain. I think well, I'll be in a very different body. Right. But I heard when we read, we really only look at the first and the last letter, and then the the middle could be scrambled, and you'd still be able to know what the word is. Yeah, let's hear so. it. Let's hear it one more time. That's a cut, by the way. She it took a little longer for her to figure it out in real life. Or whatever. There was a, whatever. That's what was tweeted to me. No, that was the, I just told him to get the clips of her saying joy. Oh, because the one that got tweeted to me was a real time. But anyway, go ahead. There was a guy named Joy Coy. Joy Coy. Sorry, Joe. No. <laughs> All right. So that's what I do. Great minds. Jim Florentine's <laughs> got to catch a flight. Yeah. So he's got to hustle it up to uh, LAX. Bite the Bullet is the name of the special. It's available on Amazon Prime podcast as well. Everyone is awful except you. And jimflorentine.com is where you go for live dates. Yeah, I'll be in Rochester, Albany, New York, Orlando, Florida coming up. Yeah, jimflorentine.com. Susie Abramite, and I hope I'm saying her last name correct, she's going to uh, zoom in. She's got a lot of thoughts, very interesting life. Uh, We'll talk to her right after this. Just Drive, love this company, love this product. So much stress, you just want to hit the pause button and breathe a little. Well, Just Calm from Just Drive, that can help. Just Calm's an all-natural blend of mood lifting, psychobiotics, and brain-nourishing B vitamins. It helps you take back control and feel like the best version of yourself. Multiple studies prove it works quickly to soothe everyday stress and sharpen focus in as little is four weeks. I know these guys. I take the Thrive Probiotic. It's a spore probiotic that banishes gas and bloat so your gut can produce more serotonin, which is your happy hormone. Plus, it supports better sleep. I know the owners. I've been to dinner with them. Tina's been on the show. Tina Anderson, I should say, has been on the show before. They are passionate about this product because it works. It's called Just Thrive. Right, Dawson? With Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic, you'll have the ultimate stress-fighting duo to help you feel cool, collected, and in control. Get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic today. Visit JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM. Oh, oh, O'Reilly. Don't miss Do It Right deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. How long has it been since you've changed your spark plugs? Yeah, that's a good question. Replacing your spark plug can can restore efficiency and performance to your vehicle. Get better gas mileage as well. And right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, get a $12 O'Reilly gift card after rebate when you purchase four more select AC Delco Iridium spark plugs. Maintain your performance and fuel mileage with new spark plugs from O'Reilly Auto Parts. You can also improve visibility with their new wiper blades. Right now, save 12 bucks on a pair of Rain-X Rugged XL wiper blades. Plus, get two times O rewards points. An extra large profile and premium features make rugged XL blades the right choice for extreme weather and driving durability. The professional parts people will even install your new pair of wiper blades for free. From spark plugs to wiper blades and more, save now with Do It Right deals in store at O'Reilly Auto Parts or O'ReillyAuto.com. In honor of Jim Carolla's 92nd birthday, here's a list of all the things Adam Carolla will do before he dies. Get lost in the desert with a hot chick, then come across an old Indian guy and speak his language. Just one of the things Adam will do before he dies. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. All right, actress, former athlete, Former uh, SI swimsuit edition as well, Marla. That's pretty good. (laughs) Susie Abramite is uh, with us from New York. Are you at right now? Yeah, from New York. Now, we'll get into all that you're doing, but you lived in Venice Beach, California, right? 
Yeah, I lived in L.A. for about 15 years. Got fed up with the homeless situation and crime, right? Um, it was getting really gnarly. It was it was at a point where I was I, I just can't take it anymore. So then <laughs> so. you then you moved to Park City, Utah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, I wasn't fighting off robbers every, anymore because, like, literally, constantly, I was fighting off robbers. I'm not. It, it was. It was at a point when there was a guy shooting up in a diaper on my lawn, or when uh, our neighbors got broken into. I saw the whole thing. Call the cops, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you're lucky to be alive, but there's nothing we can do about it." I was like, "I'm good." Sounds so right. then I went. But then, how city. do you get from Utah to New York? Well, I figured. Um, I love Park City. The nature was incredible. It was sort of, um, a two year window of just kind of, uh, going internal. I feel just like, you know, just a lot of, um, just, I feel like self-work, but I I feel like I was going to die alone there. (laughs) I had incredible friends, but it it was, you know, there's not, not a lot going on. It's a mountain ski town. It's, it is what it is. So it's, uh, I just felt like, Oh, this might be where I just, I'm going to die alone. (laughs) So then I was like, I love New York so much that I figured, um, I felt very called to it. And, um, then weirdly my lease was up. I was like renting this amazing house. It was a four bedroom house overlooking this, the lake, uh, the Jordan L Lake and, um, the, uh, uh, Deer Valley mountain, and but I, you know, I, my lease was up, and then I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to take this as an opportunity to spend some time in New York because it's one of the greatest cities in the world. Yeah, I agree. I just saw horrific footage of some homeless guy and two dozen rats running out from under his blanket that I think everyone must I saw have, that video. must have seen. Did you see that, Chris? I didn't see that. Thank goodness. Yeah. Wait, you watched TMZ last night? I did. I don't Stop think it was on TMZ. That. I got to. I don't want to. But I'm forced to. It's just like people who are late. You have to tell them. Um, yeah, I don't know where I saw it, but there is a footage of a, a bum sleeping on the sidewalk. And at some point from underneath the bum's blanket, no less 30, than 30, 30 rats. rats go flying out of under the blanket where the guy was sleeping. He was sleeping with 30 rats. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. For warmth. There's, I'm sure there's some sort of body heat that's it's added It's true. Up. Yeah. There's a three dog night and there's a 30 rat <laughs> night in New York City. And you got to stay warm w- where you can. God. So New York yeah, is like. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say there was this giant rat. We're talking no less uh, than a football, the size of a football recently. And I had a video of it just, just holding a cup like a giant one of those uh, giant gulps from like Seven Eleven, mm-hmm. literally just dragging it to its lair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good nesting material. I kind of think that rats and homeless people are pretty good yardstick to measure how efficiently a city is being run. Like, like if you always, if you just did a kind of an imaginary thing where you'd go hey, there's this little town and it's in Germany and it's really quaint. It's called Strudeldorf and they got really good food and we should go by there and check it out, except for there's just tons of rats. You'd go, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's good food, good people, good nightlife, but just fucking tons of rats. Deal like you just go, well, I don't think Strudeldorf is being run that well. You know what I mean? And if I said the same thing and just went, food's good, nightlife, you like cocktails, they make a great cosmopolitan over there, lots of homeless people, but everything else is great. You'd go like, I don't think that city is being run that well. And I think Venice is that way and New York is that way. I haven't, you know what? I would say New York feels uh, back to me, um, it doesn't. The, I feel like um, the homeless situation doesn't feel um, too bad, at least from my experience so far. I've been here for like a month and a half, and compared to LA, where every day I had to carry like a police grade taser gun and like wave it around and be like, "Yo, man, you want to go?" <laughs> like, <laughs> because, it, you know, I would be getting home from like a dinner or with friends or whatever. It'd be like 12 o'clock or like one o'clock. And, it, you know, it's like suddenly we, I would have a Mexican standoff with, you know, it would be like 
a tumbleweed would be suddenly blowing in the wind and it's like, you know, and then, yeah. so I'm like, I'm like, yo man. Yeah. And then it would be this sort of thing. I don't feel that um, anymore. Yeah, here. I, agree. I, think, I was in New York a few weeks ago. I walked all through the it's city. It's pretty great. It, it, like, feels it, feels pretty, like it feels pretty good. And you know, the yeah. other thing is I never, you know, I'm not never, but I'm six two and I'm 200 pounds and I don't want to deal with, the homeless, whatever. I just can't imagine being a petitish woman of any any age and any culture. Just a, a a woman just coming, trying to come home at night at one in the morning after after a fun Saturday night. Like I, I'm nervous as a large dude who a medium large dude who played football in high school and boxed and stuff like that. And I still am a little freaked out by it. If I was like elderly Asian woman, I've just be, I'd be a bundle of nerves. You know what? It's kind of just you. It's like Chris Rock. You run and ask questions later. I think he had a bit about it a long time ago in one of the specials. And um, and that's kind of my motto where I'm just anyone with some weird energy whatsoever. They're, you know, walking really fast or very intense. I'm like, nope, going on the other side. So yes. uh, it's just. You, you learn the, the tricks of like you're constantly assessing energy um, yes. and I've been very lucky or I've had to like I had a few instances in New York where uh, I was like, gosh, it was like one of my first jobs here in New York. I was doing a big uh, it was called a gifted man. It was pilot with Jonathan Demi. May he rest in peace. He was amazing with Patrick Wilson. And so I was so excited and I'm looking up at like uh you know new york and the and and i was just falling so in love with the city and all of a sudden there was like a guy walking very intensely my way and then a mm -hmm. guy behind me. and yeah. suddenly they meet going behind me so he literally yeah. like after, yeah, yeah. and then i was like oh oh fuck and i was like okay i know what's up so immediately i walk faster and then make a quick right they follow me i make another quick right they follow me again. And I'm like, I'm going into Bergdorf's. So then I run into Bergdorf's, hide behind this like big 300 pound security guard. And, and so I'm like, yo, I was like, uh, these guys are following me and they just can't, you know, so they walk into Bergdorf's and they're kind of like, hey, uh, we're looking for coats. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, upstairs. So I was like, these are guys who do not shop at Bergdorf's. Right. <laughs> I was it was, it was a very strange situation. And so then I booked it out of there and went to the Apple store. But like, I've had a few instances where I've had to like act crazy or like do something, you know, just you sort of puff up your feathers and you play chicken. Well, you know, it's the funny thing because I've been arguing about this shit forever where they go, you can't profile. Uh, you have to profile. You have to profile for your survival. You have to profile yeah. when you're walking down the street. You have to profile dogs when you're walking down the street because I have my dog right here, and I constantly, unfortunately, have to do that. You where... could get bit, or your dog could get bit. You have to profile. Now, you just—I think you said assess energy. I'm not sure the it's, phrase. It's more. It's, a, it's actually energy and um, how they present themselves, how they're dressed. But it's, you it's gave it a term. Off. You called it something. You said it was something energy. I mean, we can listen back to the tape. Assessing? You're you're just... Well, that's you're, you're what I'm saying, but I can't remember if that's yeah. it. But the point is, is assessing energy is a nice way to say profile because they won't let you judge. The reason you can't profile is because they go, you can't judge. You and have then, to judge. It is That's okay, all that's we got. You, well, you got to profile really, first and then you judge. You go, that guy... It looks really dicey. That's the profile part. And now I'm judging by walking to the other side of the street. It's two parts. You profile, then they judge. They've been yelling at me for 25 years. You can't judge. You can't profile. Like That's all I do, and it's what we need to do. I think there's like two parts to that. Like in the ideal spiritual plane, um, where there, I believe in the, my mom recently passed, uh, very, very suddenly. It was like, she was totally fine. Then dropped dead like seven weeks ago, by the way, she was a huge fan. We loved your show growing up. Like when I was growing up, I noticed a little dip in the ratings, what the heck? <laughs> a slight dip, a slight dip. So that, that could explain that. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, for your no, loss. but, but, uh, what I, I, I do think 
in the spiritual plane, there is no judgment. We are all of the one, you know, yes. and I feel like human consciousness existing in these bodies, but there's also the, we have the free will, like God gives us this free will and we can do whatever we want with it. And I, I feel like it's, I recently had a dream and my mom was in it and it was sort of this, that we're, we're human consciousness trying to understand itself. So God is trying to understand itself. So it's sort of like, think of like, all human beings collectively it's like it's like the thundercats where they collect like all the pieces of each other make one cat or one dog did so they, it's like did the thundercats unite was that was, was that the rally yeah, yeah, call I think, so. I think so i think that that was the thundercats so but my point is is that like i think we are all part of god we are all part of this human existence trying to understand consciousness and in that realm what I've gathered is there is no judgment. It's all of the one, but living in the physical plane, um, you have to judge, you have to um, figure out and, and cast judgment. And it's, it's not, it doesn't mean that it's bad or it's good. It's, is this going to hurt me? Is this going to like, is this a positive energy? Is this a negative energy? And I, I think we all do that. So it's like, you know, the Burning Man woo woo. It's like, come on, like, that's yeah. not a real thing. Like, no, sure, it, in the higher planes of things, I think, but there are some really, you know, evil energies and people who want to cause harm just for the sake of causing suffering and harm, you know? Yeah. So it's like judging is built in. So asking <laughs> you to. It's survival. It's a survival. Yeah, it's like next saying mechanism. stop judging is like saying stop being thirsty. It's like, sorry, <laughs> it's in me. Uh, the movie, by the way, Designing Christmas with You, is uh, available to watch on Great American Family. And I know you signed a deal with them. I guess a four-picture deal yeah, four with them. Yeah, four-picture deal. Uh, so congratulations yeah. on that. I Thank you so much. I also know that you were a highly ranked tennis player in your, your youth, Uh Got as high as number six in the U.S., which is pretty damn, mm -hmm. pretty damn high. Um, and I know you, you had you were in King Richard for a small period of time, if I'm correct about yeah. that. Well, makes sense. You play tennis. Yeah, it was about um, tennis. I actually went in. So I was I was playing um, a real life reporter, Robin Finn, who did this whole piece on the Williams sisters. And uh, when I went in for the audition, I was like, this was my life. I moved to Everett Tennis Academy. I know Rick Macy. Like I know I grew up with, you know, I was recruited by Andy Roddick's coach and, um, and I moved to Florida when I was 12. So I lived this life and in, in comparing the, the, the junior tennis to um, how the uh, Williams sisters did it. They weren't burnt out. They had more of a like a well, uh, they had more of a grounded, well-rounded way of looking at the world where there, you, I mean, Andy Roddick even said it, that he eventually kind of burned out from just this whole pressure and, and the way that, uh, the junior tennis was structured. And, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, it was this very unique story, um, that, uh, Richard Williams just, he, he had a vision and, I mean, it was so wild that he said that before even he even had daughters, he said, I was going to have two daughters and they're going to be um, number one and number two, <laughs> like literally before they were even born. Wild it, it, in it, tennis, like didn't even play tennis. Like that's it, it, he was a visionary. You, you know, I mean, I, number six, what were they ranked? They weren't playing um, junior tennis, so they weren't really ranked, but they were they were doing practice matches, I think, at the time. And then they started uh, playing pro events when they were about 12. Um, and so Kornikova, we're, she's one year older than me, but she was already number one in the world in juniors when she was 12 and 18 and unders. Like she was, wow. she was that good. I think, you know, she was so pretty. And I think like she was sort of a branding marketing machine. So I think she was like, ah, I can make money this way. Yeah. Escape from capitalism. Ah, this is fine. This will do too. You know? Sure. So I think like she was that good if she wanted to be. Um, but like she, she was like Hingis level amazing, but yeah, I grew up in, um, so I went to school with Annie Roddick and Marty Fish, and I was in the documentary <laughs> where they had my prom photo there. So that was my <laughs> whole life. So then they were like, oh my God, you know this world. And it was pretty much like 
I didn't even almost need to audition. They just kind of want to hire me for that. And um, yeah, it was, it was really cool to work with Will because he was sort of a hero of mine growing up um, as a kid. And um, like, I think all of his inspirational, the way that he looked at the world was very similar to how I looked at the world. And I thought that that was, you know, he would just go after something and he would do it bigger than anyone. And so he was, it was, it was really cool to, you know, have my scenes with him and work with him. And that was, um, yeah, it was pretty incredible. Um, you're a very attractive person and you have probably all the makings of going down the Anna Kornikova road. When I remember that phenomenon, that must've been something you were thinking about or people were talking to you about, you know, Every time I would put like, I mean, I was 16 and when you're 16 or when you're 14, you want to feel it's crazy. But I mean, now that I'm like saying this, but you, I wanted like Madonna was like a figure, you know, that you wanted to emulate at the time and you wanted to be sexy at like 14, 15, 16. And how the, how the teenagers are doing it now is just like, oh my God, put some clothes on, damn it. <laughs> right. Um, so it's, you know, you see like the photos of how things were done in, in the nineties and it's like, we're totally goofy braces and everyone's now completely done up with their nose job and blah, 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 blah. So, um, I was kind of a tomboy, so I didn't really focus on that kind of stuff. And every time I would put on, say, like a more form fitting, sexy dress, I suddenly, you know, boys would be <laughs> watching my tennis matches. And then I was like, oh, maybe this is like a potential boyfriend. And I was like, wait, it, it, so it's like I had a job to do. So it was either I'm going to be like less sexy and win or get the attention, you know, of the boys, but then be completely distracted and go down that path. So I chose, um, yeah, the the more comfortable, like, how do I be a badass tennis player? I'm now having a, a, a memory, a jarred memory of a bit we did at, at the Man Show that was, I think, the last bit we filmed. There's, I wasn't in it. Oh but my God, I think no the way. last bit we did was some sort of Anna Kornikova tennis camp for dudes or something. I mean, you could probably do the math on this one. Vague memory of it because she was this tennis player, but she was kind of first like poster tennis player. Like she was quite the hottie and somehow captured everyone's. Yeah. It's like it goes like I didn't follow tennis. I knew who she was. Right, right. Uh -oh. Athlete. Yes. You know, it's like it's the Marilyn Monroe energy of the pinup sexy or Britney Spears. Like I was I, I was just thinking recently about the difference between Taylor, Taylor Swift versus Britney Spears. And, you know, Britney Spears, I think when you're sexualized like that young, um, I think it does something to your brain. <laughs> like, totally. I feel like something you know what definitely I mean? like, happened I think, to her brain. Yes. I, but I, I just don't think I mean, even Justin Bieber, he was sort of you know, same thing as like a very, you know, young man. Um, and I think when you're this like idealized, you are the ideal sexy thing. Um, you know, and I think Taylor Swift, she kind of leaned in more. I'm like a songwriter, I'm this. And she was very careful with her brand. And I, and you see the longevity and like where she is in her career and how she hasn't one of the biggest careers of all time and still has maintained some sanity. I think there's something to it when you lean into the sexiness where it, it comes with a price. Yeah. I, I think it's a little bit of a deal with the devil. Like you can have it all up front. You can have it all fast. If you want to lean into this, or if you want to go slow and steady and treat it like a marathon, it's not going to be quite as fun or quite as fast, but it's going to be <laughs> 10 times as long. Byron, I hate to ask, but do you ever get those man show bits in order? Ah! Is he there? Yeah, I gave you a thumbs up. I gave me a thumb. Like well, you do see Chris where you are and where he is. Yes, sir. There's so, a problem. So what yeah, was the bit? I, I, so it was a man. So uh, it was a men camp for Kornikova. I, I, I didn't write the bit, and I don't think I was in the bit. And who was the other sexy blonde tennis player? There was two. Yeah, there's, well, if you don't know, then maybe I'm making it up. But. It's Susie Mary Adamite. Pierce? Well, Susie, yeah. Uh, who? Uh, oh, Ashley Harkerode? No, see, you run too deep in Sharapova. this world. Sharapova. 
Sharapova. Oh, Sharapova. Yeah. I. My claim to fame is I beat her when I was about 12. Really? She about, See, she doesn't even doesn't remember matter. her. A win's a win. How old was she? She was about eight. <laughs> so doesn't I, matter. Doesn't it matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Wins the win. She, so we were like doing like a practice uh, like match. And um, I remember this tiny, like the racket was bigger than her with her dad. And she was so tiny. And I was so pissed off that I got, I was 12 years old. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I have to be put on the court with an eight year old. Like, who do you think I am? And she was really good. She was very consistent, but she grunted just, she was like, ah! She I was like, okay, the ball's not even going anywhere. She grunted then. And I was like, <laughs> and I was so pissed off. I like blew her off the court and I was like, never again. But then I got put on the court again and I think I might've lost. And I was like, I hated life, but I don't feel so bad the second time around because, um, because she turned out to be Kornikova. And then we ended up doing um, a commercial together. Oh, really? Years, years, years later, which was wild. Yeah. Yeah, she was the other Russian or whatever she was from, uh, Eastern Bloc. And she, she focused less on being sexy and yes. I think less on marketing and more. And it, you could see it in the way she dressed. She was still like, you know, like beautiful, but it was more about is this function versus like wearing the latest thing. And, in you know, in Kornikova, like everyone would lose their mind. And I think having that crazy amount of energy on you is really hard to kind of manage if you don't know how to wield it well because i think she they were she was so young how can you wield it you know yeah um we have the bit is called camp kornikova i just don't know how to share it with you so we have to figure that one out yes so she can i've never played it i've never even brought it up have i i don't think so i I don't i I don't recall this one and it's not it, it wasn't I didn't write it, and I don't. I can't remember if I was in it or not. I just have this vague recollection. It was like the last one, last man show <laughs> bit we did. But I never. It, it wasn't one of my. Oh, I love this bit, or I remember that bit. Yeah, because you wrote Camp Sharapova. That's right. That I wrote version. Camp Sharapova, yeah. not Camp Kornikova. Yeah, Sharapova. <laughs> <laughs> took a took a second, but yeah. Wow, yeah. this is impressive. You guys went all out. I'm very impressed. Let's see if we can figure out how to show you this bit. It should be short. Uh, we don't have video here. Welcome to camp. Oh, maybe I am in stand it. Stand by, stand by. I just hear my voice. That sounded like you. That did sound like me. Could have been Gilbert Godfrey. I need right. to see the visual. Okay. <laughs> here it is. Camp Kornikova. Professional tennis training. All right, so oh wow, you had, you had a set made. We got a we had an art department. We had a budget. We have a big sign that says Camp Kornikova. God knows this probably didn't age very well. <laughs> no, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm sure it did not age well. All right, so I'm, I, I think mean, people are at a point where we're sort of over um, political correctness. You right, know what I mean? I think people so. are over it. Let's, I'm definitely over it. I'm so over I'm it. With you. Everyone says we're over it, except for they're still trying. I'm over it until somebody says something I don't like. Right. Sometimes think, I sometimes think I sometimes think the whole like canceling is it's easier to put the villain outside of yourself. So until you look at the villain or like the you know, the darker parts of yourself, you can't. You know what I mean? Like everyone has flaws. So until you like sort those self, like your, your own flaws out, it's doesn't make sense for you to put it on someone else. But until you've like sorted those things out, then you're like, Hey, I am really good about, you know what I mean? Like if you, you have to, there's a villain. I think within. So I was a villain within. Uh, listen, I, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's real <laughs> simple for me. I just don't have that much time to think about you and whether you should stay or whether you should go. I, 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 I'm, I'm not that animated by you. That's the whole thing. I, I don't get with these people. I don't get how they can put so much energy. But I, look, I feel the same way of like, I'm going to go clog the E Street artery on, on behalf of Hamas. You know, it's like, I, where's the energy coming from? Like, I, I just feel like I got to work. I got to make hay while the sun shines. I got projects I need to finish. I got travel. I got shows. I got people to talk to. It doesn't involve me getting you canceled. I don't canceled. have time to bring people down. Yeah, like, it's, like, I, 
you could see. <laughs> Who has the time? Well, well it makes know, us the maybe it makes us the ultimate narcissist. Like I think these assholes are narcissists, but maybe I'm the ultimate narcissist because I'm thinking about me and and destroying you doesn't benefit me. Right. It's just a waste of my time. And why don't you do yeah, it the but, other yeah, way? Why don't you lift others up? I don't want to do that either. <laughs> I'm consistent. Well, you know, if we if we go back to like I guess the spiritual plane again, there is no judgment, so it's like everything's okay. You know, like everything's right. You know, but then. What I've noticed for at least a lot of people that I know and that I um, absolutely love, but sometimes I think it's easier to not look at the parts you don't like about yourself and put it on someone else of like what's wrong with the world. A lot and of I projection. I just, I, you know what I mean? Like I never see someone where I'm like, wow, they really have their shit together and they're, you know, it, it always seems that it's somebody else's problem everyone else is the villain and then i see uh, like people that i know who are just horrible people being activists and it's it's like if you know if the activists were like really like wonderful people they sorted out their whole life and they're leading the charge of like hey we want peace this is what we want like there's more of a, a beautiful way of existing of like trying to help move human consciousness forward which I would appreciate, you know what I mean? Like to just be all one, like that's a great grand idea. And a lot of people are not catching up to that sometimes, but like, yeah. I, they're too angry, too disheveled and too weird for I, me to honestly, ever want to join them. Honestly, someone that is never going to change someone's uh, mind. Absolutely. Oh, someone and never will change anyone's mind in the history of life. It blocking, won't do it. Blocking traffic is, is going to change their mind. They're going to hate you. All right. I think we have Camp Kornikova. Ready, Here we go. which I haven't seen in 25 years. <laughs> I'm sure it holds up. Sure it does, too. Let's see. Oh. Welcome to Camp Kornikova, the tennis camp dedicated to making dreams come true. At Camp Kornikova, we don't believe limited athletic ability should keep attractive <laughs> women from earning millions of endorsement dollars. I almost give up when I saw that. But thanks to Camp Kornikova, I know I become a big star now. Our world-class instructors are dedicated to bringing out the best in our players. Different pattern. That's good, Christy, but uh, let's try it without the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach. We use the latest in video technology to analyze our players' progress. Big fan bat. You're making great strides. <laughs> Ooh, cool. You see what you did there? You've got to jut your breasts forward. You've got to jut your butt backwards. <laughs> Are these girls spastic? Sure, but they've got heart. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, having two left feet can be overcome. Especially if you have two huge boobs. Isn't that right, ladies? <laughs> so bring your racket. And your rack. To Camp Kornikova <laughs> and realize the potential of your outer beauty. Camp Kornikova. State-of-the-art facilities. Beautiful scenery. Hands-on instruction. Enroll now. 1900 stroke is the number. It's timeless. It still it's holds timeless. up. I don't I don't I that could have been released 20 years ago. It could have been released yesterday. yesterday. I can't tell, you know. It's no. Still, I, that could be on Great American Family, right? Oh, oh yeah, that's that's called wholesome entertainment. Yeah. I forgot I was in that bit. I forgot Shh. Dick Van Patten was in that bit. I forgot all about that bit. Yeah. But we unearthed. did a bit. We unearthed it. We unearthed you did a it. bit. You definitely did a bit. <laughs> it is it, it it is of its own time. That is definitely of the time. <laughs> is that the nineties? Yeah, the 90s? late nineties. Yeah, early two thousands. I mean, whenever uh can uh, sorry, Kornikova was Kornikova. being accused of being hotter, making money because of her aesthetic, not necessarily her tennis ability. Which yeah. she was actually, she was uh, before I think all that energy happened. She was that good. I mean, she went, she got to the semifinals of Wimbledon and she was uh, 14, 15 at the time. Like, that's insane. But I just think, you know, I think she had, she was like, oh, I can kind of relax because I'm getting, I think maybe the end goal was more money. 
where it's like, you know, like, oh, money, uh, communism, <laughs> uh, I'm out of it. Uh, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, She's a Peter mm-hmm. Frampton of tennis. That's right. We There's... only focused on on her looks. Like, and she was a great player. Yeah. Well, but I mean, she, 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 like up until that point, she should have been like, she really should have been, um, Hingis level. She should have won. I I really believe if she had focused on, um, like her tennis and kind of downplayed more of the outfits, she would have been a killer. She would have been as good as Marina Sharpova, but I just don't think, you know, you have to be a killer and you have to want it. And I could kind of see sometimes that she was like, eh, she could take it or leave it, you know? Yeah, she's but like, she was that talented. She's That's like, how talented she was. She was like, it was like a hobby. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, sometimes we think about these people and they go, well, what if, or they should have, or I would have, but she's just doing what 99% of 22 year olds would do. They go, I'll take the money and not work as hard. Do you know what I mean? I yes. mean, who would yeah. Every human I, mean, I know would do. Everyone you. I yeah. went to high school with would Wants do. Wants to play tennis. It's so hard. It's so hard. You spend seven hours a day playing. You're in the gym two hours. Like, two out, like five of those are playing tennis. Two of them are working out. And then also, like, doing weights and sprinting. And then um, you're doing mindfulness. Like, I was meditating when I was 12. And doing, like, it's literally your whole life is that. As like a 12 year old, like you get to a point of fatigue where you're like, I need to live life and, you know, hang out with Enrique and Glacia. (laughs) That was her boyfriend and maybe her husband. Her husband now. Yeah. Still her husband. All right. Let me give you a plug, Susie. Designing Christmas with you. It's available to watch on Great American Family. And uh, uh, let's see. Tweet. And Instagram at Susie, and I'll, I'm going to spell your last name so everyone gets it right. <laughs> um, a- it rhymes with dynamite, abramite. Abramite, A B R O M E I T, Susie Abramite. Hey, this was fun. Come see this us if you ever get the chutzpah to come back to LA for ten minutes. <laughs> oh, I I do all the time. I I uh, I come to LA to you know see friends, and I'm probably going to be shooting something shortly there so yeah i'll be back well, come sure. by in it. in studio uh i would love it. great to meet meet you my dear yes. thank you so much thank for joining so much. us um i can be found at grand junction colorado mesa theater january 26 two shows and then uh estes park colorado Stanley Hotel. That's where they filmed The Shining. I heard that's not where they filmed The Shining. Oh. You're just telling me that. Well, I mean, maybe. It, but wait a minute. Who just came in here and was talking about going Alonzo Bowden? Alonzo Bowden just said he had a gig. Remember right before the new year? He was saying, I got to go off. I'm doing The Hotel with The Shining or whatever. Yeah, that- he told me that. All right. I think it has something to do with maybe the exterior shots are taken and used in the film, but the interior shots are filmed something else, or somewhere else, or something like I that. I don't know why you'd want to swap out things on a place yeah, that, that was that grand. I, I've heard. I've heard. Oh, you've heard various. Okay. Yeah, I don't. But I don't know. I don't know what I heard. Stanley Hotel is that where they filmed The Shining? I am seeing that the it was filmed at the Overlook Hotel in Oregon, but the Stanley Hotel inspired the Overlook. Oh, Hotel. There we go. inspired. We go. All right. Well, color me disappointed. I want to meet that ghost bartender, knock a few back with him. Um, anyway, you can go to amcroll.com. Naples shows coming up off the hook. Comedy Club, February 2nd and 3rd. Just go to amcroll.com for all the live shows. Till next time, it's Adam for Susie and Jim and Chris. Say it. Mahalo. <laughs>